Hi everybody, I hope you're all doing well. I've got a 45 minute session. I'm just sharing wisdom, no energy work. And uh, just to go over these goals here. So the, the request is to channel Mother God and we're gonna ask her if the client is a blue ray. Next, we're gonna explore any past lives as a king. And then the final request is, we're going to ask her where the client's wizard stuff is and when it will arrive. Okay. It's a lot of energy already just, just tapping into these goals here. Okay, Mother God, Blue Ray, past life as a king, and where the wizard staff is and when it will arrive. Okay. Wow, there's some really interesting energy hitting me here. Okay, I'm going to relax and let's see what happens. All right, Mother God, okay. Okay, so Mother God is showing me this first image. It's a little bit difficult. And uh, the easiest way to describe it is it's kind of like a black slide. And then there's a platform way up here. And you're kind of sitting on this black platform. And then there's this black slide to take you down. And it feels a bit tight. And you're crying here. It's almost as if you feel like you have to go down this dark slide. There's a very long conversation going on between Mother God and you. And it's all energy, okay? So I'm just letting that conversation take place. I have no way of telling you what she's saying because it's just energy. She's telling me, because I'm like, uh, hello, Mother God, we need to find out about Blue Ray. We got to find out about past life as a king here. We need to know about this wizard staff. <laughs> so I was like sending her this. She was like, we got to do this first. <laughs> so I got to be patient. She uh, picks you up into her arms and holds you. And you cry in her arms. And she holds you close to her. And you're a fully grown man so um, it's interesting to watch if you've ever seen Steven Universe in the crystal gems she's uh, emanating the image of Rose Quartz who is this sort of like voluptuous overly like this larger than life woman who has all this pink hair that's curls and it's like roses of hair and, and she's she emanates this love towards you as she holds you. It's this larger than life woman. You need this so bad. And she allows you to hear her heartbeat. It's very soothing and comforting for you. And she's telling me that there it's she says you've lost your way. That's exactly what she says. As I show her the blue ray, and I'm really wanting to see more about this. And she again points to this scene 
as she's holding you, allowing you to listen to her heartbeat and says that you've lost your way. And it feels as though she's going to take you somewhere, but she just doesn't leave this spot. You still need to be nurtured. And this nurture is clearing your mind. All right. The next thing, it's not you that goes into her heart. She goes into your heart. And she's taking me with her very quickly. We're going down this tunnel of light. And the light is blue. And the tunnel is long and it's a circular. So we're going down and around and this way and then that way and over here and then there and then this. And it just seems to be never ending. Like it doesn't have a have an end to it. It just goes on forever without an end. But it has a beginning. But it does not have an end. So we stop. And she says, if there's no end, then there is no rush. And where are we trying to reach if there is no end? So no matter how fast we move through this tunnel, we'll never get to the end of it. So what is our goal now that we know this, that there is no end? And so we're standing in this circular tunnel with the light. We're not moving forward. And we're not moving backward either. We're just standing in it. Are we standing in the center of it? If there's no end, where then is the center? But there is a beginning. That's the interesting part. And she shows me that uh, she still has you in her arms and then she lies you down. So we're going through your heart portal, but again, we're also seeing you still in her arms and she's lying you down here. And I experiencing you absorbing this blue light from the tunnel and you're absorbing it into yourself and it's rehabilitating you. And you want to know where the light comes from. And she instantly says it comes from your heart. And you're kind of uh, confused looking. And you're, you're asking a question, but it's coming from a confusion. You get it, but you want to get it more than that. So she's just uh, asking you to relax and, and you're just absorbing in this blue light right now. And I mean, it's blue, blue. It's not like light blue or super dark blue. It's like blue, blue, blue light. And you say, I just want to remember. I just want to remember so bad. Hmm. Okay, a bunch of things happen. One is she absorbs the blue light as well and she transforms from pink into blue. The next image is uh, what is like a blue an actual person. I mean, it lo went from like kind of cartoonish looking blue rose quartz <laughs> from Steven Universe now transforms into a new image of a real person that has blue skin. And then it goes back to uh, this blue mother god slash looks like rose quartz. And this gem falls out of her third eye and the gem is blue. Ah, you say, why does it always have to be so complicated? Why can't it just be simple? And you go reach your hand out to take a look at this blue stone that dropped. And this is more like an aquamarine color. 
and it's in the shape of a heart and you say, what am I to do with this? She says that this stone, I mean, she's showing you very quickly that it uh, transforms into energy and then you absorb the energy from the stone. And she looks at me and tells me really quickly because I've seen this and I've felt this. So we can pull light into ourselves from the actual stars. So, and I've done this before. I would love to do it again because it was really surreal and cool to feel that. But you can pull energy from the stars into yourself. Now, we have a crystal, okay? And we can work with crystals, right? But what if this crystal was then like a star and you're pulling the energy from the crystal now into yourself and you pull in that essence that energy essence and you're bringing it into yourself. So the aquamarine now is filling your energy field. And I see you turn to a person with blue skin, okay? You look like a human with blue, like literally blue, 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 blue skin. It's a little bit darker blue than what we've been looking at. And it gets very dark blue. And I see you looking in the mirror and looking at the way that you look, looking back at you. And I see her and she's back to rose quartz again and she's smiling. Okay, this is going to be quite a message here, alright, so it's already pulling in some, some information about this wizard staff, hold on, we're kind of uh, connecting one series of information now with another series of information, so just pulling it in, it's just adding to this, so give me a second, okay. All right, so she's holding a staff, but she's holding air. And then she gives you this. And it's made out of air. But this air has energy to it. And you start to twirl this staff that's made out of air, and you could feel the density or the cylindrical um, nature of its build. Even though it's just made out of air, you can feel it in your hand. Mm. I'm starting to notice that this energy communication is only going to take us so far. Because one of the messages that she's sharing here is that when you hold on to needing to know something, it's going to hold you at a level of wherever you're at on your soul journey, you're gonna, you're from that level, say, I, I need to know this, I need to know that, I need to know this other thing, from this dimensional plane of conscious existence. But if you let go of all of that, now you become limitless, you become your infinite essence, and you allow that inspiration then to manifest for you in its own divine time, which now you don't have any ceiling. There's something here holding you back, and it's yourself. You're holding yourself back. Because already she's, she's showing me that there's a staleness very stale energy associated with this needing to know about the blue ray very stale specifically that one okay and that is not no that is also not yes but it's also not not yes <laughs> it's just saying it's stale it's old <sighs> holding on to needing to know this is old energy so, let's see what you say. Hmm. 
I'm gonna just leave you in the blue light here with everything that we've accomplished thus far. And I'm gonna go up to a higher dimension, okay? So that I can talk to Mother God up here. And I'm not going to put a definition on anything. I'm just gonna let her share whatever comes. I'm still going up. Still going up and up and up and up. You have some serious uh, stuff holding you back. It's like uh, I can feel it too in your heart. It's like it's like really tight rubber bands that you won't let go of. We're going so when I go up, I can feel you coming up with me, and it's it's helping to remind you of how high you can go. How high you could take your consciousness, how high you could raise your vibration. And it's also teaching you how to let go. Because man, is that a long ways down where we started. And up here, it's limitless potential. It's everything. So the closer to source you get, the more you are close to literally everything and, and every infinite thing. Every literally infinite thing. So what dimension do you want to exist on? The d lower dimensions or higher dimensions, right? So the more that you are connected to everything, the closer to Mother God you actually are. So now do you see the difference between the definition, the limit that which is blue ray, the limit that which is the wizard staff, right? That you're limiting yourself here because to be truly yourself is to be everything. And you already are a part of everything, therefore you already have everything. There is no such thing as time here. So you have to go into yourself and ask yourself, what does this mean to you? So if Mother God says, yes, you are a blue ray, what is that going to do for you? How is that going to shape your life? If Mother God says, no, of course, why in the world would you ever think you were a blue ray? Now what are you going to do with your life if you hear that message? None of it actually matters. Yes or no does not actually exist here. The, to the human it exists, but not to you, the true you. And Mother God is showing us this together. And you are way up here. You are above all of that, all of that need. I need to know. I need to have an understanding or an explanation. This past life is different. It falls into a different vibration, okay? Because it's, um, how do I want to define it? It's like, there's something freer about it. There's something rehabilitating about it. It doesn't feel like it's a control thing. It feels like it's a control thing when it's Blu-ray and wizard stuff. It feels like it's a control thing. And control energy is going to keep you low. Going to keep you low. But just allowing it to be is going to take you higher. Let's see what she has to say way up here. She shows me the rose quartz her is always with you in every dimension, in every time, in every place, no matter what. And she's always holding you and helping you along your path. So we're going to open the doorway to source energy here. I mean, she's showing me what is defined as an infinite doorway. And then on the other side is what would be defined as the infinite. As, as close to my comprehension and able to translate the infinite as I can as a human being. Okay, <laughs> so we're walking through this. And you're inhaling the source, the breath of source. I mean, it's like inhaling air. But it is the breath of source and, and it's um, enlightenment. It's enlightenment and expansion. And you, 
there's a, it's almost like a galaxy made out of golden light and but there's this what would be like a central sun but it's really huge um and it's not on fire it's just a golden orb of energy but it's enormous really enormous and you are instantly um, connecting, you're instantly recognizing, and you go straight in towards that uh, central orb of golden light, and Mother God smiles at you, because you are making a choice. You're making a choice, and then you're going for it. Without hesitation, without a second thought. She says, you decide your own universe. You create your own universe. She isn't going to create your universe for you. You create it. And she just participates in it with you. Which is a gift from your soul to her. And that's special. So she's... Uh, I, I'm going to highlight here what it all means. So we are up here at Source Energy. And you instantly recognize whatever this is about. And you just directly go towards it without a second thought. But here, you're, you have second thoughts. You're asking these questions. You need to know the answer to them. But how is that you shaping your own reality? How is that you having the power within yourself to, make, to know the answers to these questions for yourself? There's something about these questions that are actually unhealthy. Because they're creating, um, I mean, I can feel it too, a control. But when you come up here, you're free. And you know what you want and you go after what you want without asking Mother God, should I go to that? What? Why would I want to go to that? Or how long does it take? Like, you don't need to ask any questions. You just go straight there. This would be more like Father God energy. And uh, you kind of, you're just levitating on the outside of this big golden orb. And you actually press your hands upon it and you listen into it. And it sends light into your face and into your hands and it's super warm and you smile. And you actually kind of like try to hug it. It's like insanely large so there's no such thing as hugging this thing. Unless you want to grow really big, you can. But... Um, you're like small, all right? So you're just kind of like, I don't know, stuck to the outside and you're just hugging it. It's really cute. And this golden energy is absorbing into you and it's super rehabilitating. And Father God welcomes you to come in. And Mother God is smiling. This is interesting. It's like grandfather time. It's a big man too. It kind of reminds me of um, in Harry Potter the... What's his name? Gimli or no that's not he's the big man that uh works with the animals in Harry Potter and he looks kind of like this like super larger than life and a big beard and he looks jolly he looks deep though he looks like time itself and he has a very 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 large table and you're like the size of a, a fairy in comparison. And you're made out of golden light. And you're sitting on this table. And he wants to tell you a story. This feels more like uh, connecting to what is like a, a kingly energy. Everything is relaxing now. And we're transitioning between two worlds. One is what we have been looking at. The other is going into this sort of like a memory experience. And I am experiencing you as... It's almost like 
You need permission to, to be the king. You need permission to be the blue ray. You need permission and you don't. The king does not need permission. Father God says that the king does not need permission. The king does not even need permission from God. The king has to find the answers within the king's self. And you as the king have done this. Found the answers within yourself. And who else is there if you're at the top? It's you. Now you have to rely on yourself for everything that you create for others. You have had some really hard experiences. I mean, there, I'm, I'm being shown that there's one here, really loud one, as a king. And you made really extraordinary decisions to better the community. Like, better these pe the people's lives that were living there in your land, okay? But it was God, so to speak. So, like, drought came. So they're, they're showing me what is the frequency of. I don't get to see the pictures. I just get to feel it out. I feel what is an extremely loving and kind man who genuinely cared about all the people that were with him and beneath him, so to speak, and actually would come out and talk to people in the streets that were in the market was really, really kind and loving, made really amazing choices, but it these choices were somehow um it was like uh, god or the universe would throw these wrenches in it as in um, there was a lot of suffering that took place under your rule and you had to watch this happen and you did everything that you thought was right and it was right it was for you to know what it's like to be a good king and watch all of these people suffer by your choices. But it was sort of like um, weird ripples of destiny here with uh, what events kind of befell upon this community and the people. And you were not to blame at all for this. But you did blame yourself, okay? So then are you a bad king? That is one of these questions that's lingering in your soul. Was I a bad king? I brought ruin upon my people. But I did everything that I thought was right. But it all turned out wrong. So you still have that lingering in your soul. You see how this is in a control? You're not controlling this. So when you're asking about this lifetime as a king, you just, you're giving me a access to your soul, right? So Father God is helping to reveal this information because it's really useful for you. But I can feel these others, there's something that isn't um, freeing of the soul about it. Wow, it's so okay. This next one as a king is much different. Um, I see Father God, you're in Father God's palm of Father God's hand. And then he rises you up, like raises you up like this. And then as he raises you up like this, um, we see the scene change and it's uh, like a golden city. And they're not pyramids, but um, they have like pyramids type shapes, but it's not a pyramids. It's kind of like um, you have this bottom slab, okay? And then it go. It has this sort of like, um, I don't know, maybe people could walk through there. And then it has this next slab that's really thick. And it kind of creates a triangle, but it has these sort of inlets within and around. So it's got broken up parts. And it's made out of gold. And the whole city reflects the sunlight. So it's always glowing. <laughs> it's like always bright there. Very, very bright. And this is um, very peaceful too. I mean, I don't feel any disarray with this. 
and it's like plenty is always coming plenty is always coming and you're in the palm of father god's hands and in this um, experience as a king it was absolutely wonderful it was everything you could ever want it to be and there weren't any shakes um, there wasn't any shaking of the emotions or the mind or self-punishment or doubt or any of that it was really freeing I don't feel like this was on earth feels very peaceful very loving but it feels very normal as well like it would be so normal to live in this golden city is so normal um, it just felt like there was a lot more of a balance between the hearts of these people. There wasn't all that ego or greed or um, fear or war. doesn't feel like that exists there. That was really, really rehabilitating and rejuvenating. But it didn't prove to your soul that um, what had happened as that king in that life, it didn't prove it to your soul that you were a good king. Okay, this is a different exhaustion. Um, there's a lot of exhaustion just washing over my face here. This is not a king, but it's a leader of people. So you could say like um, a tribal leader kind of thing. And this is a bit of an odd uh, place to live, but it's quite swampy. It feels very swampy here. There's always sounds of insects or frogs or nature. Nature is constantly making sounds. This was really a hard life as well, but it was successful. And uh, the only way I could describe it is you had to lead your people what could be defined as a very long trek. And it was absolutely correct. I don't know what, why this had to be done. But everything that you emit from your heart as this king figure um, is this is a, this is right. This is correct. And all the people agree. And you're moving through difficult landscape. And you have a long ways to go, what could be years, even. But it's amazing because as this leader, it was all about family. So even though you had these, um, you know, you're a tribe, so everybody knows each other. It's not like a huge community, but there's lots of um, families of people in the tribe. But you were all family. And I love the feeling that is coming through on this one because um, you're leading them, but you also respect them and you listen to their concerns and you work through the issues, you work through the challenges um, as like a father figure. And it's really beautiful. But I feel that there's a toughness to this um, because it takes endurance um, and perseverance, a different type of strength. And when you finally reach this place, it feels like you have nowhere else you have to go. And everybody just, it's like uh, the community grows and it becomes like a real established village and very peaceful, very peaceful. And you, you die an old man and very happy, very happy, very proud of yourself. Interestingly enough, that lifetime as this king, this very good king, where all these sort of like uh, bad luck fall, <laughs> befalls upon everybody, um, and now you doubt yourself, you still carry that with you. You still carry that, even with these good memories. a moment here it's it's like you're processing all this conversation right now so all I can do is wait 
So we kind of return to the image of the very large table and Father God, which is, it's like time. So like all of time. And he has a large golden egg and it sounds like a clock, like it ticks. And he hands it to you. And there is a, it's like he hands you divine time itself. And you get to do what you want with it. It's yours. Do what you want with it. And it's considered divine time. Mm. Mother God is a, uh, super bright she's like her own sunlight she's been participant in this the whole time it's as if you need to be shown shown it in new ways information in new ways to help you process it in new ways you're so super loved i mean you're you're in the center between two super loving male female energies and they're bonding with you and you are bonding with them as a mother and a father. And it's it's very warm for you to have that experience. So believe it or not, there's still apparently higher we can go than this. <laughs> it's like we have to raise your vibration to go even higher, to tap into even more. So um, I see like a very tiny little speck and it's again Mother God and she's waving at us. And so we're going to go way up there. Way, 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 way up there. It's even further up than what the t we had to travel last time. But you, you are bright because you needed to remember and you now are remembering that is one of the biggest gifts that you could have received here is the is to have those memories she is always welcoming you to go higher to go higher and to see what is up at higher levels of consciousness in even higher levels of consciousness. Just when you think that you reached the highest you'll ever go, they're still higher. That's part of her message here too. And, it, and we can see it's like crazy how far we've come in this communication. And that's part of the message is to see you climbing this ladder of awareness and self-discovery and the love that comes with it and the power that you possess within yourself as a king, a good one, a very good king. The king doesn't need to give the king permission. The king decides. And that's a message for you, for your own life. And it's a good message. You say to Mother God, we, we've reached this place, it's very strange feeling, um, feels like very thin, uh, as in not like it's like we're in a sheet of paper, but um, the air is very thin. There's a lot of um, space in between energies that create the space. So there's sort of pockets of open space. It's, it's odd because it should all be one energy, like one flowing energy, but it's got sort of like um, these spots that have nothing within it. It's just open air kind of thing. But the air is thin as well. But it's... There's something very special about here. But you ask her... I mean, you're talking to her about wanting to know who you are. And I don't feel that... It's like you're saying, I don't feel that that's too much to ask. I'm simply asking you. That's all I'm doing. I'm just simply asking you. She sends me a signal. And again, it it's it's actually... It feels like you're simply asking, but you're... You, you, there's a control element to it because you, you need it to be a certain answer in a way. 
And the thing is, you already know the answer. You do already know the answer. And you need to acknowledge that you do know the answer. So then why are you asking the question? And what is it that you want now that you know the answer? Because you already know that you're connected to the blue ray. You already know that. So what do you need now? What do you need now? Because it actually makes you feel dismal to know that. And I don't know why. So Mother God says we're going to create two classrooms. One classroom is where you know that you are of the blue ray. The other classroom is you don't know. And I see that you're miserable in the classroom where you do know that you're of the blue ray. But the classroom where you don't know, you ask many, many questions, and you glow with light, and you expand, you expand and expand and expand and expand and expand. And again, it comes back to you're limiting yourself. So then you are harming yourself because an infinite being, therefore a God goddess, which you are, God goddess doesn't put itself in a category. A God goddess is already everything. So you need to be in the classroom of everything. Not the classroom of one thing, the classroom of everything. But that's not satisfying to you either. All right. All right, it's time to go into why is that? Goes back to that lifetime as a king where you doubted yourself. Where you did everything right and everything wrong happened. And you doubted yourself and blamed yourself for it. It goes back to that life. So I see Mother God goes into that lifetime and she, you're standing in the palm of her hand and you're looking from an astral view at the people and you're hearing all the different thoughts that they have about you and some of them don't th like you. And they have a really bad feeling inside and a bit of disgust about you. Even you who are so kind, they still do doubt you. <sighs> because they almost see your kindness as a weakness. And that a king should be tough. And the kindness as an insecurity. And when your kind actions come with misfortune, it again, it's like they feel, these people feel that a king needs to be tough and making tougher choices so that these uh, events don't befall upon us. So they're scrutinizing you in a way that surprises me. But I can hear that there's some obviously that really love you have felt really touched by you in their life. And they believe in you, even when all this other stuff comes. They still believe in you. And because you're kind of separated between s these people that really believe in you and love you, and these people that just, they're not satisfied by you. Then now you're kind of in between trying to decide, well, am I good or am I bad? Maybe I should never have been a king. You see, doubt. Doubt is coming through again. Doubt. The Mother God is setting you down so you can walk through these streets, okay? It's like... Pathways winding through. <sighs> 
she's telling you to have the courage to just be and accept that some people will like you and some people won't and be okay with that because you're a king believe in yourself because you're a king and the people need you to believe in yourself Man, you're... you're, you're, she's really wanting to help you to change, to change that past life, to shift it into new energies. And now I see Father God come here too, to be supportive as well. Two parents supportive of their child is what this is like. And you have to believe in yourself. We believe in you. So why wouldn't you believe in you? Now I see you in the classroom of the blue ray and you had this epiphany. And it's about believing in yourself and the strength that you possess within yourself to be what you are. This is important because once you accept being what you are, you, you become open to more as well. Because if the king just focuses on the fact that he's a king and he has to be like this, that, and the other thing, that's not true. It's just his role. But he's also able to be so many other things too. He's in a classroom of experiences. It just happens to be his title and his role. You still feel a bit contained. I mean, I'm, I'm seeing you coming to life with this blue ray, but it's like you're in a prison or a box but you're glowing and you're sharing all this energy and it's going nowhere and you're not sure why. Now Mother God again points at the other classroom where you're already a part of everything. And there are no walls and there is no ceiling in the classroom where you're part of everything. That you are not contained. Everything's very quiet and peaceful right now. And she's echoing to me how deep that this message is reaching you. And it is going deep. But it's also taking you higher. And it's almost like the final message is about creation. And creation is energy. Your energy. Blue light is energy. Wizard staff is energy. That gem is energy. The stars are energy. And in the end, it's all energy that we are labeling in order to define it, in order to satisfy our human need to define things. When there is nothing but energy here. And you are part of everything, all the energy. You are part of all the energy. So she shows me again how the human needs the answer. But the answer is a part of all the energy. But the human now is holding itself back because it is controlling the circumstances of what it needs. When if it just lets it go, 
and now is true to itself, which is free and liberating and infinite and limitless. So are you looking for a direction where you want to take your energy? A school of learning, so to speak, to work with. There's just a lot of warmth here radiating again from Mother God and Father God. And you're kind of in the center of their love. And they'll always love you no matter what. And they'll always believe in you, even if you don't believe in yourself. But if they believe in you, then isn't that enough for you to believe in you too? And I do see that uh, she's showing me that just talking about these lifetimes as a king is actually raising your vibration and it's giving you access to new perspectives that you're ready for, which is cool. And I don't see you connected to the black slide at all. I mean, that was a long time ago. Like that That's the very first message and that, that has nothing to do with where we're at here in this message because vibrational wise, like that, that isn't even there anymore because you're already expanding and opening up and receiving this wisdom and it is touching your heart it's cool <sighs> okay that's all i can share that's some neat neat stuff going on there it's kind of an interdimensional message hmm all right, thank you so much for this experience. It was really amazing. <laughs> thank you for sharing as well. And for those of you watching, if any of you are interested in exploring a psychic session with me, please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. Okay, everybody, thank you all again for watching and have a wonderful day.